The inductance of a device depends only on the geometry of the inductor. We've shown previously that the inductance of a solenoid of length L, cross-sectional area A, and number of coils N is given by the following expression. The product of the permeability of free space, the square of the number of loops of the solenoid, the area of each loop of the solenoid, divided by the length of the solenoid. Let's apply this formula for the inductance of a solenoid to an example. An inductor is made by tightly wrapping a 0.30 millimeter diameter wire around a 4.00 millimeter diameter cylinder. What length cylinder has an inductance of 10.0 micro henries? Let's begin by sketching the scenario. We're told that an inductor is made by tightly wrapping a 0 0.30 millimeter diameter wire around a tube of a certain diameter. So this will represent the tube. We will label this as D sub T for the diameter of the tube. And we're given that the diameter of the tube is 4.00 millimeters. We make an inductor by tightly wrapping the tube with a wire of a certain diameter. We will say that the diameter of this wire is 0 0.30 millimeters. We'll have the wire span the length of the tube. Here is the bottom of the wire. There is our solenoid. We need to find the length of this solenoid in order to have an inductance equal to 10.0 micro henries. So we found previously that the inductance of a solenoid is equal to the product of the permeability of free space, the square of the number of loops in the solenoid, the area of each loop of a solenoid, and the divided by the length of the solenoid. We know the inductance. We have enough information to find the area of the solenoid because if we look at the solenoid edge on, the area is given by the area of a loop. So the area of that loop is equal to pi times the radius of the loop squared. Well, the radius is just the diameter of the tube divided by two. So we have the area of the loop is equal to pi times the diameter of the tube squared divided by four. The problem is we don't know the number of loops in the solenoid, but we do know the diameter of each wire and the total length of the tube. So if we could take the length of the tube divided by the diameter of each wire, that's going to tell us the number of loops of this solenoid. We could use that for our formula. So this means that the inductance of the solenoid is equal to mu naught times the number of loops squared, but the number of loops is the ratio of the length of the solenoid to the diameter of a wire, that quantity squared, times pi times the diameter of the tube squared over 4 divided by the length of the tube. So let's isolate the length of the tube on one side of the equal sign. We'll do that by dividing both sides of this expression by 
mu naught pi the diameter of the tube squared over 4. I see that the length of the solenoid in the denominator on the left-hand side cancels with a length in the numerator on the left-hand side. So on the left-hand side, I'm left with the length of the solenoid over the square of the diameter of a wire of the solenoid is equal to the inductance of the solenoid divided by mu naught pi times the square of the diameter of the tube divided by 4. I'll go ahead and put that 4 in the numerator. So this gives us the length of the solenoid equal to 4 times the inductance of the solenoid divided by the permeability of free space times pi, and this is multiplied by the ratio of the diameter of the wire to the diameter of the tube squared. Well, let's go ahead and plug in our values. So we have the length is equal to 4 times the inductance. The inductance is 10.0 times 10 to the minus 6 henrys divided by the permeability of free space, which is 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7 tesla meters per amp. And this is multiplied by the ratio of the diameter of the wire to the diameter of the tube. The diameter of the wire is 0 0.30 millimeters. The diameter of the tube is 4.0 millimeters. And this quantity is squared. So on the right hand side I see that a meter in the numerator cancels with a meter in the denominator. We have Henry's in the numerator and a tesla meter per amp in the denominator. Let's do a unit check. On the left hand side, we have units of meters. On the right hand side, we have the units of a henry over a tesla meter per amp. Well, remember, one henry is equal to one tesla meter squared per amp. Notice what we have here. We have the tesla in the numerator cancels with the tesla in the denominator. A meter in the numerator cancels with the meter in the denominator. A amp in the denominator of the numerator cancels with an amp in the denominator of the denominator. The units end up being units of meter, which checks out. Continuing with our simplification, the 4 in the numerator cancels with a 4 in the denominator. And in doing that, it looks like I forgot to add the pi from the previous step. So let's go ahead and add pi right there. We have a 10 to the minus 3 in the numerator cancels with a 10 to the minus 3 in the denominator. We have a 10 to the minus 5 in the numerator cancels with a 10 to the minus 5 in the denominator, which makes this 10 in the denominator have an exponent of minus 2. And you know what? That exponent of a minus 2 can come up to the numerator and become a 100. So what I'm going to plug into my calculator is 100 over pi squared times the ratio of 0 0.30 over 4.0 quantity squared meters. When I plug this expression into my calculator, I get that the length of the solenoid is equal to 0 0.057 meters, 
which is the same thing as 5.7 centimeters.